Welcome to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast is being claimed as fact. Most everything discussed here are our own individual, personal opinions, beliefs, and experiences. We encourage you to always do your own research and form your own opinions. Nothing one person says on this podcast goes for everyone here. Each individual speaking is speaking only for themselves and no one else on the podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Welcome back to Yeah, No, I Know. We are in Christmas. Yes. I should have shoes on, but I don't. <laughs> Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Brooklyn allowed us to put a Christmas tree up finally. Yay. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> not before Thanksgiving. I'm not one of those people. Wait till after Thanksgiving. Then you can decorate. You can have. What do you tree. guys think? Do you have Christmas decorations up when you celebrate Thanksgiving? Mm-hmm. Me too. My Christmas tree has been up <laughs> since after Thanksgiving. I mean, after Christmas. I mean, Halloween. After Halloween, yeah. <laughs> too many holidays. I was about to go set mine up, and then I was like, "Oh wait, but we're still painting the walls in that room, so it'd probably be kind of stupid." But I really just want to go home tonight and set my tree up. I bought these like little octopus glass ornaments last night in Las oh, Vegas. Octopus. They're so how cute. cute. <laughs> yeah. They're very cute. <sighs> what are we talking about today? Instagram versus yes. reality. <laughs> and in uh, social media stalking. Yes. Um, all of that. That's a whole can of worms, I guess. Heck yeah. Um, but mm-hmm. if you're watching on YouTube, then we also are on um, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. If you just want to listen to it, and if you're on... Um, just audio right now listening. We're also on YouTube. So um, we'll link you guys. And we also have Jensen here with us today. So you might hear some baby noises. Yeah, he's being good right now, but you might you might hear some baby noises in a little bit. He does get pretty <laughs> chatty, as you guys know. <laughs> um, so I guess we can just freaking jump right into this one. So obviously, this day and age, there's like a filter for everything. Um, and Facetune, and there's just this whole world of where people put their best foot forward and they only let you see the best parts of their life. Mm -hmm. And it, I can't imagine trying to deal with that when I was younger on top of just comparing myself to like the popular girls at school, having this, like these online platforms where people are using filters and Photoshopping everything. And, you know, I feel like there's like kind of nothing wrong with that, but like you just have to kind of know like that you can't compare yourself to that. So what are your guys' thoughts on like how Instagram has become this thing with filters and everything? Like- well, I have a 16 year old daughter. So I see, yes, yes. <laughs> Told you he's opinionated. <laughs> yeah, so I see how like obsessive it can be. You know what I mean? Like she's, she's a good kid and she doesn't, she's not like doing anything bad on it, but I mean, these girls are literally, like, posting, not posting, they're sending each other pictures of each other, like, constantly going back and forth, like, oh, I'm in the car now, I'm at the store, I'm here, yeah. I'm there, and it's, like, it's not even Instagram, it's, like, some whole other Snapchat. thing, too. It's Snapchat, and it's something else, I can't think of what it's called, but, like, paparazzi or whatever, but there's just this constant need to be on at all times. I, like, that's exhausting. Yeah. No, it is. I, it totally is, and I just think it's, like, I don't know, it's just, it's just this, like, expectation that you feel like you have for yourself because you're comparing yourself to, like, other Mm 16-year-olds that are, like, maybe their parents are really rich and they're showing the best parts of everything about their lives and you never see any of the real stuff, usually. It's just kind of, like, here's my curated life and my perfect family and, like, look at this vacation and that vacation and, like, what do you guys crave as, like, consumers of it. I mean, obviously you probably all have Instagram accounts and stuff, but like, I'm curious, like, do you seek out influencers who like show more of the bad stuff and talk about more of it? Because I find as an influencer, sometimes when I do that, I mean, I'm not for everybody, just like you were saying on the last episode about Thanksgiving, like you're, you're probably that person for someone where they're just like, yeah. Oh geez. And I know I am I'm not everyone's cup of tea either, but like sometimes when I'm like super brutally honest about something or things, people will be like, oh, you're being so negative. Mm -hmm. And so it gets construed in a way that's like, 
No, I'm just sharing what the fuck is really happening. Yeah. So where do you draw the line? And what do you guys like as like, you know, consuming stuff online? I'd love to know. Like, do you like that some influencers now aren't Photoshopping their cellulite and their, you know, pimples and whatever? Or do you want to see the better part? Like, I'm just, I, I'm curious to know. And what about, yeah. what about you guys as consumers? Of um, I think not even just as a consumer, I think just as a person, I just like when someone is just very genuine and raw and real. Like, that's how I am. I'm just, like, an open book, and it's, like, take it or leave it, you know? And I think that's why, like, you and I connected, like, so fast. Like, we barely knew each other, and we just, like, it's like, oh, yeah, I like her, you know? Yeah. Like, same with Jenna. It's like, we are not, oh, bless, bless you. you. Bless, bless you. you. He's allergic to fake people. <laughs> <laughs> well, who would well, then he shouldn't be sneezing. <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> No, I... He's um, laughing. Yeah. Are you allergic to the fake tree right here? Oh, there you Did go. You see it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, but yeah, I think... Um, I don't know. It's it's just hard. Like, no one wants to... No one likes a Pollyanna, you know? And I think all of us have our ish, and it's really refreshing when people just show it, you know? And... Yeah. But there's, like you said, there's kind of that fine line of, like, how much do I share or not share? <laughs> like, I, I I really am just an open book. And I remember one time, like, I, this is going to be kind of funny. Like, I wanted to, like, put it out there on social media that, like, I take my best poops when I go to Home Goods, And I remember telling you In a that, public place? Yeah. There's like, something about the, like, smell in there. I don't know what it is, but, like, <laughs> Home Goods, TJ Maxx. Yes. Like, I don't know what it is. Thank Every you. Every time and I walk in, I'm like, shit. Okay, and I had this conversation with a few women, <laughs> and that's why I felt the need to, like, I wanted to put it out there to be like, is there anyone else who's like this? But then you're like, oh, well, like, who's going to listen to this or even judge me because I'm talking about pooping and... Oh, you we know, talk about we all, all day long. I know, I know. Well, that's why I love yeah. you. We're afraid to talk about pooping. <laughs> we all poop, but I don't. I love that. Chris and I will like message each other. I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm like voice memoing. I'm peeing right now. Like, <laughs> dude, one of so my ex husband's cousin. We pretty much just speak to each other through pictures of our poop. We send each other like <laughs> pictures of our poop when it's like, and sometimes we'll put our hand there for like size reference, and like we just like send each see other. How healthy you are. I don't know what it's, it's not about health, it's just oh. like, look at this gargantuan poop that I just, like, like how, laid. Like how your daughter and their friends, that's the new thing, they'll just, like, take a picture and then, like, write a message in it, that's, like, what she's saying. She'll do that with her friend, just a poop. I mean, it's, it is very good to, to document your poop. Right? I mean, I don't do normal ones, so it has to be, like, really long and big or just, like, whatever. I'm going to start texting you, like, pictures of Jensen's poops. Oh, well, oh, babies gosh, are prepare different, me. Though. Babies are different. <laughs> Their poops are different. On our way over here, he had a really cute outfit on and then Aww. was feeding him. I mean, it didn't even last five minutes. Poop up the back. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah, uh, that's great. So, and you know what? That's the kind of stuff that I don't show on social media, which I should. I just post cute pictures of him, not when he has poop up his back. Oh, yeah. I'll definitely be well, posting the poop up the back. I'll yeah. be like, this little bitch. It's that, not. That, I was <laughs> thinking about that, too. Like, while I was putting this room together, right? Like... I'm like, oh, cool, we're going to show up on this podcast, we're going to have the YouTube, and it's going to be all super cute, but, like, there was a lot of shit to, like, get it set up, you know what I mean? It's not like we just walk in and everything's perfect and so pretty, like, there's work that goes behind it, too, and I think that's, that's part of what's making society and younger generations a little bit naive, too, is because they're just seeing this beautiful Instagram life, but it's like... There's a lot of fucking hard work and dedication and loss of time and loss of, you know, time with your kids and time with your loved ones that goes into building these lives that look so perfect on Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Yeah. So it, we're losing that that core thing, which is the hard work behind it. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it just puts, like, unrealistic expectations out there. Mm -hmm. Like, no, they don't really look like that. They, like, yeah. Photoshop their asses or it's you know, fake mm -hmm. or, you know, it's just like hard to like, I feel like it's just it's so it's just you're, we're in a world where everything is so fabricated and so yeah. like fake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm not shitting on people that use filters and stuff. I do every single oh, day on too. my story. I love that shit. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like, you know, you just have to remind yourself that like, that's everyone's like best everything that they posted. And they took like 700 pictures to get the two that looked good. And I'm yep. no different. I take like 700 selfies and I'm like, yep. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Yeah. You know, so it just makes you very critical of yourself. But 
How I do you think, think there's one picture that I've ever posted that isn't photoshopped? Yeah, same. Like, they're all photoshopped. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, how do you think that affects, like, younger kids today versus how when, like, when we were younger, we didn't, like, I literally learned how to do my makeup from a Bobby Brown book that I bought that was paper. Like, how do you it. think, like, seeing all of this, like, fabulous lifestyle on Instagram makes kids feel? I would have felt so poor when I was young, like, and just so, like, like, I didn't measure up. Like, what do you think it's doing to kids these days? You know, and I think it's going to affect each kid and each person very differently. Like, I find a uh, drive and I find, like, it, like it's an influence. Like, I find aspiration from it and it, it makes me want to work harder and things like that. But then I'm sure that there's people where it's going to make them crumble and it's going to make them feel like there's nothing they can do. So yeah. it's going to affect each, in each individual differently. For sure. So it doesn't mean that I think we should get rid of it altogether. I just think that it's something that should be taught and should be, you know, like kind of like sex education. Like these are things that parents should be talking with their kids about and setting real expectations because I mean, for me personally, like I love it. I love looking at these, these, beautiful women and yes some of them are photoshopped and everything but it's also art to me it's not just oh this person's perfect it's like that's aesthetically pleasing and i do like that and i'm in the beauty industry so i'm not looking at it just as like oh that person's skinny it's just it's pretty to look at like unfortunately that's the, that is the truth too like we want to look at things and watch people that we think are pleasing to our eyes now what you think is beautiful is going to be different to each person and it seems like with social media, there are a lot of people to choose from. So just find your tribe, you know, find your people and follow them. Mm -hmm. So I also I, I think with this like newer younger generation, it um there's I'm sure you've seen like all the memes and stuff that are like like what the heck like they're skipping that awkward phase oh. like and jumping straight oh, to my pretty gosh. like tell me about it. I mean, we all like had braces and like probably blue eyeshadow and bad dream, eyebrows, right? Like, bad eyebrows, dream matte but foundation. They were good eyebrows back then. Were Mine they? weren't. <laughs> were they? Yeah. Were they? Like when Stefani, like the pencil thin eyebrows, like we were the shit. It doesn't I make mean, you more attractive though. Like the way that no. makeup and brows are done now, little kids know how to accentuate their mm -hmm. most beautiful features. Whereas I didn't. I was putting foundation on with like a sponge and wearing like cheap makeup that I stole from Target because I had no money. Oh my God. Like, yeah, terrible. <laughs> oh yeah. I've shared that before. It was awful. I used to literally, my trick was I would um, put... Uh, so I would take jeans to the dressing room and I would put makeup in the pockets of the jeans and I'd be like, one, two, and then I'd go in there and I'd put it in my purse. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, we've all done things we're not proud of. So <laughs> yes. It's I awful. Yes. I stole a pair of sunglasses once. Ugh. Me too. I, I had, a, I had them on now. my head after I tried them on and I just walked out with them. On accident? No, on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, like everyone has stolen something yes. at some point. Yes. Like, when I was little, I stole a little purse or something, and I got I was forced to go back and return it. Because, like, I was taught, like, you don't steal and stuff. Right. Um, but my parents were kind of strange growing up. Like, I literally told my stepmom when I was, like, 13 or 14 that I needed deodorant. And she was like, let me check with your dad and see if that's a necessity. Like, that's the household that I grew up in. So oh, that's wow. why I was stealing makeup, because no one would buy me anything, and I had no money. Oh. See, I think mine was I was trying to Not get that control. that's okay. No, but. no, not at all. I, I was very out of control of my life, and it made me feel like I was in control. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Jensen, what do you think about Instagram versus reality? No stealing anything. Don't See, this to right me. here is reality. I know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but, yeah, this is my reality right now. I mean trying to be a working mom and it's like you know we filmed an episode earlier and I didn't have him here which is nice but I also miss him but it's hard like being away from my child and so it's like all right well we're just gonna have to listen to Jensen talk so I can be with him since it's my day off from the salon so <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so yeah. what do we think about um like so you you brought up like the filters so I know some people get a lot of slack for them. People really love them. People really hate them. People are like, oh, they're so fake. Like, what do you guys think? I think if you don't like people using filters, don't follow them. Yeah, true. Yeah, and then sometimes, you know, pe yeah, people like them. So I don't know. I love them. I, I think they're great. Um, you know, it is refreshing sometimes to see people's Instagram stories and they don't have a filter on at all. And you're like, yeah. oh, wow, they're normal people. But, yeah. like, I don't. I feel like I kind of don't need that reality check because, like, 
I like know a lot of the people that I follow online and I've seen them in person and I know how they are. And like, I just think filters are fun. It's the equivalent of wearing makeup. I mean, we don't walk around. I mean, we literally walk around with filters on our face in real life. Like, it's no different. It's just, we're not putting on. I mean, you can get on Instagram and not have makeup on and use a filter, right? So what's the difference between (laughs) just going to your room, putting makeup on, and then getting on Instagram? It's the same thing. All the filters are different. Some, like, literally change your eye shape and your nose yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, but we can do that I, with contouring. Yeah. True. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. lip injections. Um, exactly. I mean. Actually, it was so funny. Okay, I have to tell you this, Kristen, because um, we were filming, I don't know, a little while ago at the salon, and you did, like, a quick little reel or something, and um, you used a filter, and I was like, oh, that looks really good. Like, I like it. I for myself, I typically like the ones where it just kind of, like, softens your face. Maybe, like, it doesn't give you, like, the lips and the contour, and, like, the changing your face one. Yeah, yeah buddy. Um, and I was like, oh, that looks really pretty. Like, send me that filter. So you sent it to me. So it was, like, the first one that I had saved. And I was like, oh, I'm going to try that one that Kristen had. And I looked so ridiculous. It did not look like me at all. And it was so funny because I was like, oh, that bitch Kristen. No, her face just... <laughs> It looks that good like well apparently not no it didn't that's what i'm saying it like didn't change your face that much and like it looked really good oh. on you. so i thought it was like a natural looking one so and it changed your I face i did a lot. it yeah so like your oh. face is more aesthetically pleasing according to instagram filters oh that's weird people make their own individual ones like we made some for arctic fox oh. and we you know i told her i said oh let's make the eyes a tiny yes. bit bigger and like the nose a little bit smaller and so yeah so it's interesting everyone that makes them makes them like differently mm-hmm. yes i know i want to get some my friend Harley just had up some made too. They're amazing. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I like them because I swear sometimes I look better in person than I do on my phone. And I'm like, that's not how I look. Right. So I'm going to just put yeah. a filter on to make it more like it is in person yeah. sometimes. Sometimes I feel kind of guilty because, like, I want to take a picture. And it's like, I, come on, I just had a baby. So, like, if I'm at home, like, I'm not putting on makeup. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm lucky if I brush my teeth by 4 p.m., you know. <laughs> and But I want to take a picture with my son and so I'm like, okay, filter, but then it like filters his face. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to filter him. Yeah. Like, you I don't just, need a filter. I just want me to look cute, but he's already so cute. I'm sorry if mommy's put filters on you, bud. And oh, it's I'm pretty. filter it up with my baby. Uh-huh. I'm just, they, have you seen the video of the baby looking at their phone? And it's the dad putting the filter on his face. I don't know where the baby uh- is. And, like, the baby, like, gets freaked out by the yes, filter. Yes, 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 like, the yeah. horse face or yeah, something. Yeah, something like yes. that. Yeah, that's oh my so gosh. sad. The baby, like, freaks out. Oh, I love that. Um, <laughs> speaking of social media, which brings me to the other topic for today, is social media stalking. Social media didn't exist when I was little, and you were not able to stalk people. Nope. Now, you can see everything. You, like, it is so easy to find out what you want to know by looking at someone's page, Mm -hmm. looking at their tagged photos. By the way, if you're dating someone new, always look at their tagged photos and see what they're all about and what they've been doing. That's smart. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank God for social media stalking. Otherwise, my husband and I wouldn't be together. So There you go. She social media stalked me. My (laughs) social media stalking was driving by my ex-boyfriend's houses to see if their cars were there or if some girl's car was there. (laughs) Yeah, it didn't exist back then. So, like, but when I was in my early 20s, obviously there was MySpace back in the day. Yeah. And, like, I, my social media stalking, remember that there's also even apps that will tell you, like, who's visited your profile. I've, I've done a couple of those back in the day, but then I was like, I don't have time for this. Yeah. Um, but I, like, when it comes to boyfriends, when we break up, I do not look at their Facebook. I don't, I unfriend them on everything. And I just, like, out of sight, out of mind, like, they never existed almost. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what are your guys's, like, do you social media stock have you social media stock whether it's a girlfriend or a boyfriend or an old friend or I think I've looked up ex-boyfriends just to see if they are on the social media market um and most of my ex-boyfriends don't have social medias I think there's a couple and they're just super boring and I'm like oh yeah dodged a bullet (laughs) and then I probably look up old friends more than guys just because like sometimes it doesn't end well (laughs) <laughs> and you're like what are they doing right now yeah like how are they doing without me <laughs> that's but i do it a, on my own profile so i just don't watch their stories oh yeah because then they could see you. yeah i actually just <laughs> saw so that abusive ex that we touched on in um 
one of our last episodes, he actually, I saw him watching my stories. Oh, really? And I was like, what the? God, I wonder if he's watching that. Easy. <laughs> he's totally probably not. Um, if my ex-husband had a social media, I would probably look at it. Yeah. Yeah, but pure morbid curiosity. Like I don't watch my He's homeless. Like, what would he post? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I'd be super curious. Yeah. And well, then I'd probably get over it very quickly, but I think because I haven't seen him in 10 years, so I'm like, hmm, I wonder what he's up to. Yeah. Huh. And I have a kid with it. Well, I mean. Right. You know, biologically, but. Right. What about you? Do you? Have you social media stalked? What do you do when you break up with someone? Like, do you, like, check out their social media? Do you delete them? Do you never look at it again? Like, what's your Ooh, what's your do you post things to poke at them? Oh. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Oh, like, for sure. I've yeah. done that. Um, I don't know. I don't think I have. I mean, as far as social media stalking, when I was younger, yeah, I definitely did, you know, try and, like, keep an eye on them, see what they're doing. But. Nowadays, like, Andy and I have a firm rule of, like, we don't follow any of our exes on social media. It's, like, there's just no yeah. point to, you know? Yeah. Once you're... You do too. Yeah, once you're in a committed relationship, it's, like, there's no point Excluding to follow Including my exes. ex-husband. He was my business partner. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. yeah. That's a little yeah. different. Yeah. I'm... Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. My... I have a girlfriend who's, like, really good at social media stalking. Um, Like, there were some people that, like, we couldn't find and, like, okay, not even kidding you. I met a guy one time at a bar and we hit it off. I think he got my number, but I didn't get his or something. And, but then he like never called me. And I'm trying, this was like years and years and years ago. And she went on Facebook. All I knew was his first name and the city he lived in. And she found him. Wow. And it was like a really common name. It wasn't like some random name. Didn't know his last name. And, like, she just – I don't even know how she did it. Like, I was like, you're so good at social media stalking. Like, it's crazy oh, dang. how you can find people, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, I probably told her to do it back then. But nowadays, obviously. Yeah. I definitely feel devil. like I did that more back then. <laughs> My ex-husband's calling me right now. Oh, his ears are ringing. <laughs> yeah. Speaking yeah. of the devil. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's crazy. That's, I feel like that's I don't have skills. time for that now. But definitely, like, at the time, it was – I never cared enough. Yeah, I don't think I ever cared enough to do that or spend the time. But yeah, I don't look at like ex like what if when I would break up with someone, you would never hear from me again. I wouldn't call you, I wouldn't text you. Like that's just not my style. Like I would literally mm-hmm. pretend you didn't exist. And like never look at your social again. I would delete you off the face of the planet and just bye. Yeah. There was an Instagram that I was following and she posted someone's story. It was like a screenshot of her story. So I'm assuming it's real. I don't know. You know, Instagram versus reality. You never know. But she was saying that this girl walked in on her boyfriend to surprise him in the morning, brought him breakfast, and he didn't hear her come in. And she saw him in bed, like with his ex girlfriend or something like that. And so she left her key there, um, left his house, went immediately to the phone store, like Verizon or whatever, and changed her phone number. Okay. She, within a week, got a new job in a new city, like, completely blocked him from everything on social media and just never gave him an answer or an explanation of anything and just... That's amazing. Well, for he was there, he knew that she saw something. Right, yeah. So she left her key and left breakfast there. So he knew that she came. And then she just, like, completely changed her life. I was like, I hope to God that this story is real because... That that's woman, awesome. you're amazing, and, like, you're a saint, and I love that. Because that's... that's what every woman should do, because it would drop. Can you imagine? Oh, that guy is, like, going yeah. nuts Scratching for the Scratching his head. Right? Yeah. So, rather than social yeah. media stock, just <laughs> cut that. them out from your life. <laughs> yeah, that's so glad. That's so cool. If anybody ever does that, please tell us. Yeah. That'd be so rad. Right. Yeah, what are, what are your breakup stories? Like, what have you done? Maybe it was a crazy thing. Maybe it was, like, a fucking cool thing like that like I'm curious <laughs> yeah so okay what about like crazy weird social media stalking I mean obviously I'm not cool enough to have that have either of you had like no, no psycho fans Kristen I had a fan nice. put my address on the internet one time oh next to like some crazy uh that I was racist and things like that that was interesting um which was really dangerous and fucked up and um $13,000 later with legal fees She's like, I'm 16 years old. And I'm like, to my lawyer, and I was like, exactly why you shouldn't be on the internet doing what you're doing. Wow. You are a moron. Like, your parents need to do a better job. Ridiculous. But other than that, I have not had 
knock on wood, any like stalkers other than people harassing me and brands that work with me for their, whatever reasons they think one thing about me or whatever. But other than like no guys or anything like weird like that. How about you? No. No. Just my husband. Yeah, no. Huh. Well, I don't I think guess it's a good thing. Yeah, I feel like we don't really put ourselves out there like that. You know what I mean? Like, no, what, what do you mean? Maybe I shouldn't go there. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you said it. Just like, I feel like there's a certain type of persona that you can put out there where people feel like they can approach you that way and mm-hmm. they can say certain things to you and they can try and make passes at you where. We're like very, like, like, not welcoming of that at all. Yeah, you probably so, don't want to fuck with us. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. There was a guy that um, messaged the Yeah, No, I Know Instagram and was like, um, I have a story. And I'm like, what's your story? And he said, I'm in love with the girl with the tattoos on her neck. And I said, aren't we all? Oh. And he said... Something and then I, he said, "Oh, is there a competition?" And I said, "No, because she's taken." <laughs> <laughs> what weird that he didn't like just go to my profile. Maybe he's he did. from some other like country. Like, maybe he slid into my DMs and I didn't catch it. Yeah, maybe. But <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny. Huh? I'm like join the join the club. Interesting. <laughs> Get in line, buddy. He doesn't even know your name, but he's so in love with you. Yeah. I'm like, right? how do you even, like, find the, the chick with the neck tattoos? <laughs> there was a guy at the – I put this on my Instagram stories. If you watch my Instagram stories, maybe you saw this. But there was uh, – I was at the Roxy in, in, in Encinitas, and I thought he was the bartender, but I think he was the bar back, and he put the menus down. And the way that he looked into my eyes when he set the menus down, like, it was – it was, like – Wait, how, it, how long ago was this? Last night. Oh, okay. We got that's good. Look at you. Because our Andy's like best friend used to be a bartender. At, oh, uh, and I could see that happening. He looked at me like he either wanted to tear my ass up, like we just got married, like the old starting line song. Uh, is that starting line? I think it is. Um, or he was like looked at me like I was his soulmate. Like it was bizarre. Like he stared. What did he do? So he wasn't there. He oh, stared oh. into my soul and like out my butthole. Like in <laughs> one in one end through the other. Like it was just like I looked at my friend and I was like that guy just like stared into my soul. And then he came back and said, "You have the most beautiful hair." Oh. And I was like, I've never had a guy say something like that to me. Like that's yeah. so cute. I told Nick about it. I was like, dude, he looked at me like I was like his soulmate or something. Aww. And Nick was like not jealous at all. And I was like, did you just show like a little bit uh, of jealousy? Ken ever. Just a tiny bit? Ken will never be jealous. The only, the <laughs> only time he ever, ever, ever got a little bit weird was when one of my friends came up and he was putting his arm around me and then like hanging and then like Ken was like, what the hell? I'm like, he's gay. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> never mind. That's the only time he ever got upset. But um, I didn't, okay, so I've never had anybody online hit me up like that, but I did have a guy once, I went shopping at this place at the mall, and then he later found out where I worked, came to the restaurant. That's a little stalkery. Oh, but he was so high, I didn't care. <laughs> um, and, like, asked to be seated at my table. I worked at Macaroni Grill, and you know how, like, they write, you know, their names on it, and I waited on him, and then he left his phone number, and will you go out with me with a $100 tip? Nice. So I went out with him. And you bought dinner with a hundred bucks. Um, I no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But, yeah. That was the only closest thing I've ever had, and that's when I was 20. So. <laughs> <sighs> when I was, like, in high school, I my school was next to, like, this motocross place. I don't know what it was called. It was in El Cajon. But there was a guy who, I don't know if it was on MySpace or what it was, but, like, would be, like, oh, you go to school next to the, like, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I didn't know who he was or – I'm trying to remember, like, if he was messaging me on MySpace or if it was a text message. Like, I don't know what it was. I didn't really do text messages in high school or school. Like, I didn't really have a phone that I could do that with. But I'm trying to remember. And that was a little stalkery. Nothing really became of that, thank yeah. goodness. But, like, it was a little stalkery. Yeah, he wasn't your top eight. <laughs> Guess not. Isn't that what it was, top eight, top ten? What, oh, MySpace. MySpace? Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Oh, was it eight? 
It was, it eight. was eight. Like, and yeah. then you'd get really upset if, like, one of your friends or somebody knocked would, like, you off. Yeah. Or if, like, you were number four. You're like, what the hell? That's so funny. Yeah. And then if, like, you were dating somebody, you put them in number one. Yeah. If they didn't, then. And if you went to a guy's cheating. profile and there was a girl in number one, you're like, oh, case yeah. taken. Yep. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. That's, that's so funny. funny. I totally forgot about that. Jensen yeah. thinks it's funny, too. Oh, and you could do your own profile. Like, you could do music and a background. Oh, yeah. I had a mouse and, like, all yeah, the HTML. that was so cool. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. what are you laughing about? Do you guys follow any pages that are like? There's one that I follow. It's called like the Birds Papaya. Oh and yeah, I, yeah, I love. I her. love. I love. Yeah, like how, you know, open she is about everything, and like how it's like it's just nice to have people all over the spectrum. Like, you don't just have to be, you know, skinny. And like in shape and whatever to like have an Instagram she's, page. She's and stuff. so pretty. Oh my gosh, she's she gorgeous. Is. Yeah. She's so pretty. I was I love that you bring up her page because um as a new mom, it's been really interesting navigating motherhood and your body and a messy home and having, you know, cute pictures of your baby and your family up on Instagram. It's just it's a lot to navigate, you know, and it's yeah. like like you wanna show it all, but you also I don't know. It, it's hard. Like you see, you see the moms. Like um, I don't want to mention the ones that I'm thinking of that their pages are just like perfect, and their kids are on it, and they're matching. And it's like, well, aren't you freaking cute? Because my kid had a really adorable outfit on, and now he's in this dinosaur onesie because he pooped himself. You know? Yeah. I mean, um, and it's and yeah, like you said, she she shows. Her body and the the not so fun parts of pregnancy, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's hard. It's hard being a mom and being okay and happy with your body afterwards, you know. And it's it's awesome what she's doing, you know. A lot of a lot of. Are you pooping? Probably, she's probably pooping again on mom. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, and that's why I think it's important. Like people can pick who they want to follow, right? So like, if people want to follow somebody who shows that reality and all of that, then they can. If somebody wants to follow somebody who has this perfect picture wall, right? It's like the picture wall in my house. It's like, I'm not going to put, like, pictures of my kid with a blown-out diaper, right? Like, I'm going to put the pretty <laughs> pictures up there. And that's basically what Instagram and Facebook and all of that is to some people. It's their picture wall. It's their memory, you know? Yeah. Like, I know I put a lot of, like, big moments on my personal one, and it's more just so I can, like, look back and be like, oh, yeah, that was a special moment. That was a special moment, you know? Yeah. But if you're... Yeah, if you're trying to, like, influence people, it just depends on what your motive is, you know? Yeah, I think some people's brand online is to have this polished, you know, look, and honestly, I'm too lazy for that. Mm -hmm. Like, that'd be cool, but I also like to just be able to be raw and, like, post what, like, a blown-out diaper, maybe, or, you know, whatever. Not that I don't ever want to post the picture-perfect stuff, too, but, like, I think it's just people's brands, like, you know, and they kind of cultivate what they want online and for some people that's more of a business for them where they right. only want to show the mo- more beautiful parts to get brands to work with them or whatever whereas like I need to be passionate about it so I need to put like my personality and like real life into it because right. I don't have the time to do anything else I feel like that is your brand your brand is raw. Your brand is real. You it are... has become that. Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and I well, follow since yeah, since I've known you. So. Yeah, and I follow. It's kind of always been like that. Okay. Um, I I I follow both kinds of people. I follow people like yeah. that, and I follow people like the birds of papaya, where she like shows you know her cellulite and things like that. I really like those pages actually, where it's like don't compare yourself or whatever, and it's like you know um, it'll show someone in that one bikini like just for sake of an example like selena gomez and like one bikini where she looks amazing or bella hadid or something and then they show the next picture and it's them in the same bikini right, except it's angle. not one of their photos that they chose that's at a different angle and stuff and it's kind of nice because it's like oh they don't always look perfect either you yeah. know and and angles can do a lot oh my gosh so much it's crazy. like my gut is literally hanging over uh, these leggings right now but aren't they the best leggings ever they need to be like two sizes larger, but they are no. so comfortable. Kind of. I mean, I'm like four months postpartum. I'm like in a crop top trying to suck it in while we're sitting here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sucking it in real hard right now, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> these well, to jeans. I'm gonna be there too soon, so I, you know, I'm in this weird position place where I'm <clears throat> 15 weeks pregnant, 
It's so weird that I can talk about it on camera. I know. It's right? so bizarre. It's weird that um, I can talk about it on camera. I know. Um, I'm 15 weeks pregnant, so I just kind of look like a chubby little monkey. Um, and I'll show you the 15 weeks picture because I want to do like a little collage. Yeah. And so I've got this picture from the side, and I literally just look like a little sausage. I don't look <laughs> like I'm pregnant. And You're so, not like cute pregnant yet. No, You're I'm in this, yeah, I'm yeah. in this weird position. Well, obviously without the kitchen, I haven't been eating super great either. So I'm, to I'm toning that back and like getting back to eating more healthy. But so that's not helping the figure also. But yeah, I just, I don't, I don't pop it all right here. I right. just kind of look like I'm just chubby. Um, so it's like in this weird position where it's like, I don't want to wear things that are too baggy because I don't want to look like too slobby or like whatever, but I also want to wear things that are like tight because I just look like I haven't taken a shit in two weeks. So <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? So it's just yes. this weird like area where I don't know what the hell to wear. I just want to <laughs> sit in PJs all day. Yeah. So what did you wear? How did you get through this oh. weird phase right now? She wore a lot of dresses. Yep. Yeah, but it's cold right now. Yeah, I did get uh, lucky with the time. Are you cold though? Not so right are you now. Like hot? But... <laughs> are you like hot in the beginning? Like, cause you're like, no. I guess, but I'm so cold. I feel like more towards the end, you get oh, okay. warm when when the baby's. Really I mean, yes, in. definitely yeah. then. But um, I'm cold right now mostly. During... So no, I mean it was this time of year though that I remember I told you I found out we told our parents I was pregnant um, at Thanksgiving last year. So it was this time of year. Yeah, um, that's right. I feel like I got um, a lot of jeans that were maybe like a size or two bigger so I could still wear some jeans before I like oh, actually I gave popped. You stuff. Yeah. You would give a yeah, I don't fit any of my jeans right now. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I did a lot of dresses because yeah. you can grow in them and you can wear them pretty much as long as they're stretchy, you know? Yeah. Um, why are you like burying your face in me? Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think, but I think that's what I did. So, yeah, yeah I remember. Too. I just remember a lot of dresses. And, yeah, yeah. And I just feel like here. bloated. Like those t-shirt and... dresses. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I need to go shopping and get some more things that are a little bit more comfortable. Cause like I'm like trying to like like what do I want to post on Instagram? Like what do I want to take a photo of or whatever? And I just feel like bloated and like chunky right mm -hmm. now, and it's not comfortable. And so like trying to take like an outfit photo, I'm like. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just being really hard on myself. So like, yeah. I need to go shopping, I think, to get something that I well, feel comfortable luck, in. Well, good luck, because there's nothing. I mean, shop. I go out shopping, and then I come home, and I'm like, I should have just gone online. Where do you shop online? Because I need some new spots. I mean, I shop on Nordstrom's a lot, honestly. I love their returns. Are yeah, so easy. but I like Urban Outfitters. I like, but I, I have a, I kind of dress like my 16 year old sometimes like honestly like I just the it's girl cute I love the way you dress <laughs> she she's always like no mom no yeah no yeah so but I love free people yeah um can't order <laughs> can't order from there or urban outfitters so. yeah that's that sucks um but yeah Nordstrom's you can get free people in urban through them true and uh I know the Dolce Vita and like all those places I don't really order from them and I don't know why what section on Nordstrom do you shop at? Like the junior section? Because yeah, going through like the... Top Shop and the okay. BBG. The, it's B the urban. It, no, there's like an Urban Outfitters like label or or like their own line at Nordstrom's, and I love it. It's like the sweatshirts and the baggy jeans and the okay. white. Like I just got the cutest white Gucci tennis shoes. Oh. So I feel like that like dresses up an outfit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I like Vichy. Yeah, her dresses are super cute. The Vichy ones. But... He's done. I, um, I was going to say one thing before we wrap it up. Just about how a lot of people share a lot. How I actually have the heart, a harder time sharing. Like, I want to post things, but then I'm like, it's not perfect. So I can't post it. Where I have, like, the opposite problem. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like, people share... To, like a lot and even since I was little like I would sit on the sidelines and my mom would be like go play go play and I'd be like no and I'd watch the game or I'd watch them jump rope and I could never jump in and do it until I felt like I understood it and I was going to do it well like even as a kid so like it's like I, there's so many things that I want to post like I want to post like putting this together and this and that but then I'm like I always feel like I have to save it until it's perfect yeah and that's something that because nowadays like it's not enough to be just a hairdresser or a baker or a you know toy maker like you have to be a videographer a photographer 
you a social media marketer. Like you have to be all these other things now. And that's hard to break out of that shell of like not wanting to post, but knowing you have to for your job. Mm-hmm. And so. you also have to not compare yourself to other people, I guess, too, because people, some people aren't all that fancy stuff. You know, yeah. they do well. Well, and it's not even like me comparing myself to them. It's that it's my own expectations for myself. But like, why though? It's because of them, right? The bar no. has been set high. No, like because I've been like this since I was little. Like, yeah. like five, like six. My mom would be like, Jen, go play. Like she would like try and get me to go and I just never would. Like I had, like I just in my mind had to be good. Or like I'd go to dance class and I would watch. And I once felt the I same had, way. Did you? Yeah, okay. I was I I was afraid to participate in things because I was shy and I didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah, like I want to make sure I know what I'm doing. When I go out with my girlfriends, I don't go dance with them. I don't either. I, but I'll go up on the box and I'll and I'll go go dance. Yeah. So I, I won't sing in front of people, but I'll get up on stage and sing. Huh. It's that I can see what you're thinking about me. So I don't want to do it. But if I'm up on stage, I don't know what you're thinking. I can't see you. I don't know. Huh. Yeah. Andy and I were just talking about something like that recently where we, like, we were saying we don't really like to learn something new. And I don't. maybe some people really enjoy learning, but I don't enjoy the process of learning. I just already want to know it, and I want to be good at it. Be good at it, if not even be the best, but at least yeah. be pretty decent at it, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think it's kind of a similar concept of, like, I just want to already be there and be good at it. I don't want to have to learn. And I think it's probably because there's so much vulnerability vulnerability yeah. in that, you yeah. know, in, in not being good at something and having to relearn something, and it makes you feel just not good, you know, sometimes. Yeah. And so I think that's probably... Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people probably struggle with that. Yeah, I think it's frustrating to, like, not be able to do it. Like, Nick was just getting upset because he couldn't figure out how to do the electricity stuff in the house. And he was just getting so frustrated that he didn't have the skills or know how to do it. And I was like, yeah, well, many people don't know how to do it, you know. But I feel the same way. Like, if I can't fix something or do something the way that I need to, I get frustrated. That's why, like, I don't know if I care to learn how to snowboard. Like, that's too many, like, annoying sessions of trying to learn how to snowboard where I'm just, like, this it's like, so fun though that's what I hear but I had a horrible time the first time I went yeah yeah learning new stuff is not fun <laughs> yeah I'm not, a, I'm not a fan either I like yeah. I like to learn on my own mm-hmm. there's a difference I think between being forced to learn and then seeking it out like like I like to look up things on YouTube I like to um think about things and like how to make things better but like yeah. to sit down and like actually learn is harder yeah. The, these days, like if you're, you know, a hairdresser or a baker or you make things or you sell things or whatever, like we're, we're required now to be photographers, videographers, social media experts. Um, you know, we have to do it all now. And it's so much. And if you're not willing to put yourself out there and learn all these new techniques, like your business is going to fail. Yeah. It's insane. Like that's a lot of pressure. I, yes, looking good and all that pretty stuff. But like, to have a successful business now, it is harder than ever, I feel like. You can't yeah. just have a good product. You have to also have a product that's in everybody's faces. And yeah. the algorithm sucks. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. And there's the market's so saturated in so every saturated. section because totally. everyone wants to own their own business. Yes. Well, and I feel which like awesome, made that but... possible, too, because everybody right. didn't have a job. So not everyone wants to be an influencer and everyone wants to. So, yeah, it's a lot. I remember back, like... When I feel like there was the first generation of YouTubers, right? It was like yeah. Candy Johnson <laughs> and Crispy, and I was kind of like barely shortly after them, but still like clumped in with mm-hmm. them because they're close to my age. But like then people that I would see would try to start like YouTube channels. Maybe it was like someone from high school or like whatever, or like a friend, and they would just be like, I had no idea like how difficult this yes. was. Like setting everything up, the lighting, the editing, the like you know, posting about it and putting yourself out there is like a lot Mm -hmm. in itself to sit down and talk to a camera and put it up on the internet for anyone in the world to comment on how you look, your weight, what you, you know, everything, what you say, it's, it takes a lot of balls. And I think you just get to a point where you just don't like care what people Mm -hmm. think about you maybe, but it's, See, and that's, it's all, it's difficult. All yeah. of it. I've, I mean, I've been saying forever that I'm going to do this YouTube channel. I'm going to show how to do hair and how to do this, but like, everything had to be perfect. Like, why does it have to be perfect? It doesn't have to be perfect, but like I would stop myself. And I know a lot of people like have this problem too, because one of my really good friends is like 
a social media person and she says like everybody has this issue like they feel like they're not ready and like if you wait till you're ready then you'll never be ready and yeah like I'm like oh I have to have my room set up and I have to have the background I have to have the neon sign and I have to have to have to it's like <laughs> just do it that's so, what I felt no. about having kids <laughs> I'm like, if See, I, I did that, like, like no sweat. <laughs> Didn't even think twice. That's so funny. Yeah, I know. I was like, if I wait until I feel feel comfortable and ready, like, I'm never going to have children because it's just going to be, like, when I'm, like, 50. Yeah. Or maybe not even then. Well, so. see, I didn't put myself on YouTube until you, and you didn't get pregnant until me, so. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you got me pregnant. I mean, whatever. <laughs> you know, with it. <laughs> Your hair looks so pretty down the back of the chair. It's just oh, like. Let's see. What does it look like? Well, it looks better before you moved, but. <laughs> well, never mind. Look how pretty it is. <laughs> it's like the curl is like perfect. Like Rapunzel. I'll take your word for it. Um, I was going to kind of ask because like you were, you guys were saying like, I feel like everyone is trying to be on social media and whether it's like for their own personal um, pages or it's something for their business, like everyone's just really trying and striving for that right now and I know I mean even me included like we're trying to potentially do stuff with my husband's business online and like have so many ideas haven't started them yet um you know but what was I gonna ask I was gonna ask you something oh I was gonna say do you have any advice for that Kristen like because you've been there done that you've built a following so like I think everyone's always like oh like what's the trick or how do you get all these following and you know and I know a lot of people who um I I know someone specifically that does social media for people and his um opinion was oh you just buy followers you just that, yeah no um oh and oh and don't worry about the likes because you, you can buy comments and you can buy likes and once you get it to a certain amount they don't even you can't buy customers. No. You can't buy gratification, I, huh? Right. And so, um, and I personally, don't, I don't know. Definitely people, don't do that if you have a service-based. Um, don't ever do that. Yes. Right. But like, especially if you have a service, like, because your, yours would be a service, right? Oh. Mine, like, is a service. Like, those fake followers are not going to bring you business. They will, in a way, because people will go to your page and think you have more clout. Right. Oh. However... There was a wave of influencers who did just that, mm -hmm. where you all of a sudden could buy fake followers, and then there was liking programs and yeah. stuff that would like people's pictures so they would come follow you mm -hmm. and stuff, and like, they would do this, and so brands would start asking for like more information, yes. because they were insights, like, right? wait a sec, you get 90,000 likes on a picture, but you can't sell shit. Um, my advice for like social media, I don't even know where to start now. Back in the day... I had my advice and I was like, look, like put yourself out there, do what makes you happy and you're passionate about, use the right hashtags, connect with the right people and, you know, work hard at it. It's not going to be an overnight thing, but now everything has changed so much that I don't even so know what much. works. If I knew I wouldn't be losing followers every <laughs> single day. Like I used to have almost a million followers and my follower count just drops and drops every day. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just. I think that, like, what's going on in the world has, like, everyone's, like, things are getting, like, mainstream media and Instagram included and Facebook are pushing certain things to the forefront of their platforms that they want people to see and consume. Right. And if you don't fall into that, then I don't think that they're pushing your content, really. Yep. So, yep. my advice is I don't have any anymore because if I knew, then I'd probably be over a million now rather than <laughs> just losing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what what the deal is anymore mm -hmm. it's kind of the wild west no well, unfortunately <laughs> yeah I yeah I, I know reels is a big thing right now though i do know people that have had a lot of success from reels because it puts your uh your instagram out to people that wouldn't generally see it mm -hmm. um so that's the only advice i have is reels um, My manager told me that ugh, reels and none of that doesn't even, it doesn't even matter anymore. She was just like, likes are so all over the place and stuff like that, well, like I for businesses this, or whatever. I posted this reel a while ago, and like my, my Instagram has been dead for like probably the past like eight months, um, and I had this one reel, I mean it didn't do anything crazy, it was like 100,000, but I probably got like 200 followers in like a couple days, just off of that one reel. That's, so, that's good. yeah, I mean, I guess, but you have, you have a much bigger following than I do too. So you probably don't see a couple hundred, like if it No, I would. That. I mean, okay. it just, it, it's like, it's just been negative. 
lately. Gotcha. Like, well, remember I told you I've been going through and deleting people through my like. If I'm just like scrolling in bed, like I'll go through and I'll find people that are not active on their Instagram because they're taking up space. So if there are Instagrams that like people haven't been on since like 2015 or they don't go on it, you're being pushed out into the Instagram world, and these people are taking up spots. And um, you want to have more active followers, people that are like watching and, and interacting with things so i've been going through and i've been like deleting people like if you have a past day thing posted anything in 2015 you're getting deleted <laughs> yeah so if you don't have a picture you're getting deleted if you don't have any pictures on your post you're getting deleted yeah so yeah i don't know my manager basically said that like you can post whatever you want right now likes are yeah. all over the place like take the opportunity to like literally and i've always kind of posted what i want yeah. but like you know uh she's just like it doesn't matter if it's a reel or a this or a that like just kind of do have what fun. floats your boat so and you're, you'll nice. find your people, or yeah. your people will find you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been nice. But, yeah, as far as doing business and getting out there on social media and stuff, that's a, it's a good question. I think if we had the recipe for that, we, everyone wouldn't be like, what's going on with everything? So I wish I had some advice, but um, it used to be a little more simple. Now it's just so oversaturated, and there's just so much going on um, that, yeah, who really knows? I mean... YouTube views have never been this bad on my channel since Lots I people's. started my channel. Yeah. So, and it's scary because a lot of people, this is their bread and butter. Yes. Like they get paid for AdSense and they don't, that's what, that's their living. Mm -hmm. And if I was relying on AdSense right now, I would be screwed. Yeah. One of our other influencers, she like stopped posting YouTube because she's like, I, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. So, Maybe it'll come back, but, you I know. I think people are, I think COVID, everybody was home. And, and the views were okay then. They weren't as low as they are now, but, like, they were okay. But I feel like, number one, everybody wants to be an influencer now. So now they're all focused on their own stuff. And number two, everybody's back to work. And not mm -hmm. only are they back to work, they're back to work double time. Like, we are making up for lost time. We lost a year and a half of our lives, and everyone is trying to just jam it full of either work or play or travel and – so nobody's sitting down watching like an hour long YouTube. You know what I mean? So I think that that's well, these kind people of, are. So thank you. Thank you. We You're love the OGs. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's hopefully it comes back when people start to mellow out again. And yeah, I heard see, a yeah. podcast. Not, I love YouTube. Yeah, I know a podcast <laughs> not too long ago, and they were saying that because of the way that technology is going with cars being able to self drive, that um, podcasts are kind of going to be on the way out and people are going to be watching more YouTube videos mm -hmm. in the, instead of just listening while they're, um, you know, commuting to work because the average commute is like 45 minutes. And so they're like, people want to be visually stimulated That's now. It's a good thing we do both. Exactly. Oh, you mean because they won't be looking at the road ahead of them and driving? Right. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, I guess it's a good thing our podcast is on YouTube too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. We got uh, you covered. Well, I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm out of breath all the time, just like talking on YouTube. Like, did you notice that, that you're pregnant? Like, just being oh, out of breath. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Standing and doing hair while I was pregnant and chit chatting to everyone, I was like, oh <gasps> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're pushing on your your diaphragm, right? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's all, mm -hmm. yeah. It's all getting shifted. I don't know what it is, but yeah. Um. All right. Well, I feel like we kind of wrapped it up. Did we yeah. wrap any? You got anything else to add, anybody? No, I mean, I think it doesn't get more real than this baby sleeping while we're doing a podcast. <laughs> Did he fall asleep? Oh, yeah, he's passed out right now. Just with your boob in his mouth? Yeah. Well, I was trying to hide <laughs> the fact that my boob was in his mouth, Kristen, but that's okay. Oh, uh, we literally said I guess... that you were starting to breastfeed. <laughs> I think everyone knows. Look oh, at him. Well, that's reality, right? Why hide it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, thanks for watching, listening, whatever. Um, we'd love to hear your guys' opinions about kind of some of the topics like Instagram versus reality. Like, who do you like to follow more? Like, who? what kind of pages do you like to follow? What do you put to... out yourself? Yeah. Yeah, and if you guys have started your own business or your own YouTube, like, drop your drop your handle there so we can yeah. check you out. We can all support each other. So, yeah, that sounds good. And I was going to say one more thing. I forgot. <laughs> Well, pregnancy brain. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's so it's... That turns into mom brain. <laughs> yes. I heard it really never goes away. It doesn't. You're, no. you're due. <laughs> but in the best way. Like, you have a baby out of it, you know? That's good. So, yeah, yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm very excited for that. <laughs> I wouldn't trade my brain for my babies. <laughs> I wouldn't either. 
All right, guys. Well, we will see you in the next episode. Bye. I can take it. I don't need a prize. Leave out the fact that I am up against a thousand guys. My intuition efficient because I can use my mind.